Hey, what's up guys, it's Lord Civic, and today we are finally going to be doing my home theater tour video. I've been super excited to showcase this to you guys for the past couple of months, but I've been sending speakers back, getting new ones, sending subwoofers back, getting new ones, but we were finally done, and I love my current setup. So yeah, I'm super excited to showcase it to you guys. Before we hop in, I just wanna say a special thank you to a couple of people, and I will be linking their social media handles and their YouTube channels in the description below. But uh, first and foremost, thank you so much to Kale Media. Back when I was doing my Star Wars reviews, um, I said I loved the Dolby Atmos mix so much. Obviously, I couldn't hear the Dolby Atmos, but the, um, the, the, the audio was crystal clear and I loved it so much that I was like, okay, I need to get a dedicated home theater setup. And I had told my subscribers I had planned on just getting a Samsung Q90R, but Kill Media was like, no, contact me on Instagram or Civic. We will DM each other back and forth. And this guy lives all the way in Norway. And I don't even know how many messages we've shared between each other now, probably like 200, 300. But every single question that I had, he answered it. He helped me pick basically every single piece of equipment I have in my setup. And I'm just super duper grateful to him. So thank you, Kill Media. Also, there's a um, couple of YouTubers I'd like to give a special thank you out to. First and foremost, um, Villaman. Man. Even before I got into this whole like dedicated home theater setup thing, I had got my initial OLED settings when I had my C9 from him, and it's even also carried over to my CX77 inch. Obviously, I've tinkered with it specifically to what I like, but he was basically like the foundation of groundwork. I also had a conversation with him last week in his comment section. Really awesome dude. He said he's gonna be watching his video, so I'm really excited for that. Also, a couple other YouTubers. Thank you so much to Spare Change, Youth Man, K Space Guy, that home theater dude, Subwoofer 101, and Techno Dad. All these guys had very incremental roles in what equipment I chose in my setup. And as I said, I'll be putting their YouTube channel links in the description below. Also, uh, thank you so much to Reddit and more specifically Audiophile and Home Theater um, subreddits. They were very helpful. And I also put pictures of my setup on that subreddit. They gave me thumbs up. Uh, TV's not too high guys and uh, no stickers on my receiver now I'm saying that if you guys like what you see please make sure to hit that like subscribe button like and subscribe button and I'm saying that I hope you guys enjoy the video so first thing we're gonna go over is my TV because without a TV my home theater wouldn't be a home theater it would basically just be a fancy smancy audio setup and my TV of choice is the LG CX 77 inch and let me tell you right now, this is not only my favorite TV I've ever owned, not only my favorite display I've ever owned, but my favorite piece of tech that I ever owned. This thing is absolutely fantastic. Every time I turn it on, I am absolutely floored in the picture quality, perfect contrast, perfect blacks, its ability to be able to play games on PC anyway, on consoles and won't be able to do it to this holiday season when the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X comes out but being able to do 4k 120 hertz and then when hdmi 2.1 i'll be able to do 4k 120 hertz with hdr movies look absolutely fantastic to the point when you're watching in a black room it's like where does the tv end and where does it start because of its super duper tiny bezels and then also being able to turn on and off batman spider-man star wars wes anderson films casablanca uh <laughs> Every, everything just like looks absolutely amazing on this display and it's just I'm shocked every time I turn on you guys know me I'm a huge huge gamer and the picture quality of this thing is able to do with games like I recently just played through the entirety of the last of us two absolutely love that game loved it so much and I know this is gonna probably get a couple people upset and it's very de decisive and I understand why people didn't like it, but Last of Us 2 is my favorite game of all time and that game looks absolutely gorgeous on an OLED. It's absolutely insane how good it looks. Also, Spider-Man, Ghost of Tsushima, which I'm playing through currently, Persona 5 Royal, which is it's just crazy because this, is, this showcases how good HDR technology is. Persona 5 is not a 4K native game. It doesn't have the fanciest graphics you've ever seen, but with saying that, the art style is absolutely fantastic, what more so makes up for it. And it also doesn't support HDR, but on this panel, the game looks absolutely insane. It's a very story-based type game, so like with the screen going black on certain things and like almost like a comic book story being told, it looks absolutely fantastic. Now, accompanied by my LG CX, I currently have some Philips Hue lights behind the TV. Now, I'm still trying to figure out exactly if I like them enough to keep them because they were pretty expensive, but special thank you, shout out to my friends Braden Walker and Josh for recommending them to me. 
but these things really enhance games movies a lot but it's really like hit or miss and stuff like batman because obviously like in batman you want it's a very dark case movie but in movies like spider-verse darth vader's rogue one scene which i'm not gonna up on this video because of copyright reasons but i'll showcase it to you guys it just looks absolutely amazing um but in games it is crazy like persona spider-man all of that stuff is just really really cool so next thing we're gonna go over is my receiver and amplifier of choice from kill media's advice he had recommended the denon x3600h and the emotiva emotiva xpa gen 3 three channel amplifier now the denon x3600h is a nine speaker um, receiver and when you plug it up to an amplifier it actually allows you to do 11 speakers so for my current setup I believe the correct term is 7.2.4 um, I have a center channel left right um, four Dolby Atmos speakers surround and then rare so yeah it's seven point and then the two subwoofer 7.2.4 right so um, let me just say this before with the receiver this receiver and i might be incorrect on this i believe it's able to power 180 watts per channel but once you get past a certain number i don't think it I, or i might be incorrect i don't believe it's actually totally 180 watts once you get past a certain number of speakers but which i'm about to talk about in a second the kef r5 and the kef r2c that i have require a ridiculous amount of power to like truly shine and that's what the Emotiva Gen 3 did. Um, before with my speakers, they sounded really good. And it was like only when they got to the super high extreme volumes, like way above reference, that they sound kind of like distorted. And what's crazy is this Emotiva was more expensive than my receiver, but it is probably, if not one of the best additions I did to my setup. Before the speakers sounded good, but now they sing. The only thing I really regret about it is I really wish I went with the five channel one or even the seven or nine channel one. I have to get an extra one if I wanna be able to amplify my uh, surround and rare speakers, but like left, right and center channels speakers absolutely sing with these things. It's absolutely insane. So over here, I have a couple of my gaming consoles. As I said previously in the video, I'm a huge gamer. So I have basically every current gen console and I plan on getting the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X when it comes out. But right here I have this absolutely ridiculously adorable Animal Crossing Nintendo Switch. I did an entire unboxing on this thing. This thing looks absolutely insane in person from the dock to the actual Switch itself and even like the back panel thing. Uh, right here I have the PS4 Pro which is able to play some games in native 4K and then some in other with checkerboard rendering. Um, right here I have my razor blade, which I haven't used in a while because I haven't had any reason to go out. But um, I use it for some light gaming when I go out on the go and then also use it for editing as well. So then over here on this side I have my Xbox 360, which I use solely to play Guitar Hero. Um, I have World Tour 3 and Aerosmith. I need to get... Um, two in Metallica, but playing Guitar Hero on a setup like this is nothing short of amazing. It's so loud and bombastic, and even the hue lights and stuff, it looks pretty cool. Um, gonna showcase a little um, clip to you guys of me playing it. I plan on doing uh, some future showcase videos of it on the fe in the future, like it's really, really cool. Then below it, I have my Xbox One X, which most of the games that are on Xbox right now are also on PC. So be previously I was using this as my Blu-ray device, but now I have the Panasonic UB820, which I use over there, which is a fantastic Blu-ray player. Um, it can, it, it's really, it's really cool. And I, I'm, I'll cover it more so in my uh, review when I do it in a couple of uh, weeks. Also, I use my Apple 4K TV for um, watching things as well. And then below this, I have a couple of my favorite records. I haven't figured out exactly where I want to put them in the room, but I have some of my favorite, I guess, musical albums ever. The La La Land Original Score, uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, uh, Marshall Matters LP, Kid Seek Goes. Just really stuff I really like a lot. So I'm going to sit down here for a second as I talk about these speakers and subwoofers. Now, for years, I have been content with either using the speakers that come out of my TV 
um, Sonos, which I had for about two years, which I'm not knocking. Sonos is really nice for what it is and it's really easy to use as well, which is one thing I really miss about Sonos. It was very, the ease of access was really nice, but it's nothing compared to a dedicated home theater setup, man. Um, separation of speakers, the level of clarity that you can get with mid-range, low-end, or even high-end speakers is absolutely insane. For years, I've always heard people talking about speakers and how good they sound, and people spend thousand, hundred thousand, ten thousand dollars on audio setups, and I was just like, it can't possibly be that great. Like, even on Reddit, I've seen some people had setups like a $900 TV and then like $10,000 in audio equipment. It just didn't make sense. But let me tell you, it is worth it. And I am so glad. I started with Klipsch, which Klipsch is not bad. It was just a little bright to my ears. I love the more neutral sounding of Kef. All, the, all these things I have, I would highly recommend. And everything that I'm putting in this video, I'm going to link down below in the description. But these, let me start first with the Kef R5s. These things create such a rich, clear sound. And these are pretty expensive speakers too. And I remember on Reddit, people said that the difference between $1,000 speaker and $10,000 speakers, the difference was astronomical. So I can't even imagine the difference between 1,000 and 20,000 or 1,000 and 100,000. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like how much better can it get? And these things create such a good sound, not only movies, not even games. First thing I wanna talk about is music. There is, so, I listen to a wide variety of music. Um, I would say probably my top five favorite artists are Daft Punk, Eminem, Kanye, Lady Gaga, and Woodkid. But I listen to a lot of oldies, Ella Fitzgerald, uh, Frank Sinatra, um, the Godfather soundtrack, um, You Are My One Heart, I think is the name of the song. Like, it, the separation of channels and the sound coming from each speaker, and I think like even, I think it might be Fly Me to the Moon where Somebody's like tapping their foot, but you can only hear it. I, I might be wrong on that. I might be another Frank Sinatra song. But there's so much intricacies and small details that you miss out when you don't have a dedicated home theater setup. Like it just, it sounds absolutely mind blowing. There is this like distortion sound during Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger by Daft Punk that I didn't hear. It sounds like an off score is being plugged in. And these things just create such a rich, authentic sound. I'll be watching Matrix or Star Wars, a lightsaber, and it just creates such a sound stage that's so good that it makes you feel like you're in whatever you're watching. Kef R2C, dialogue comes across crisp, pristine. Crazy thing is when you're listening to a dedicated home theater setup, this center channel speaker is going to be playing at least mostly 80, 90% of what's going on on the screen at most times. Unless you're watching, I guess, like maybe a Transformers movie where there's a whole bunch of sound coming from a whole bunch of different stuff or just like very actiony heavy movie where dialogue is not very heavy but like this is smaller than the clips one i had before i had the 504c but with this thing in the amplifier plugged up to it just it sounds absolutely amazing then right up here i have my kef q50a's these are my dolby atmos speakers i also have two more in the back as i said i have a 7.2.4 and then here let me let me talk about these things let me scoop up the SVS PB 4000s. Now, this is where I had the hardest time choosing exactly each in piece, each piece that I wanted. I had started with the SB 3000 and no, first of all, I started with no subwoofer at all. Let me just start that. Then I was like, oh dang, I'm missing something. And I was like, even when I had my Sonos, subwoofer made such a drastic difference. So I don't know why subwoofer wasn't on my radar first. But I got the SB3000, I was like listening to music, I was like, oh, that's nice, that's cool. Then I watched freaking Mad Max and my life was changed forever. My hunger for LFE, low frequency, heavy bass grew. I became a bass head as soon as I started that movie, almost immediately, the roaring of the engines, everything. And then I got the SB4000, which sounded nice. Then I watched um, Subwoofer 101, he was like, you need to get the SB4, SB, if you're getting a, not the SB4000, if you're getting a subwoofer, get dual, so you don't have nulls and dead zones in a room. And as soon as I watched the video, I was like, oh, it does sound kind of like weird in that room. Then I watched um, that Homer Theater dude, and he was just raving and talking about the PB4000. And I was just like, wait, is there that drastic of a difference? And I was like, nah, I'll just be fine, content with the SB4000. 
Then I watched Spare Chain's video on the PB4000 and he was not, no, his review of the SP4000. He was like, I love the SP4000, it's so, so nice. And he's like, but I miss, I not miss, he's like, I can't go without the feeling of base going on your skin. And like, for you guys that don't know, the PB4000 can push pressurized air onto the room and these things dig deep. I also have these foams over the one port because it can dig even deeper than it is, but I can't even imagine. Like it literally, the best way to explain these subwoofers is like a well orchestrated earthquake. Like it's, 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 pr it's pristine base. It sounds precise. It'll be there and then it'll just disappear. It won't overstay its welcome. It's just absolutely amazing. And then again, I went back to uh, Subwoofer 101, had to go with those duels. Um, honestly, I was going to get one PB16, but uh, that home theater dude was like, um, you really don't need uh, <laughs> to uh not to you don't really don't need the pv 16 unless you want unlimited levels of base and like honestly these things i have them set on negative nine and i can take out this port and i can put them in lower like these things already dig so deep that it literally feels like my room is shifting and uh if i turn them any deeper i'm pretty sure my room would i wouldn't i'm pretty sure it wouldn't break because i have isolation stands but I would, I, I think I would hurt my ears pretty, pretty badly. And I, I don't want to do that. Uh, now with saying that, let's hop over to my Blu-ray and Steelbook collection. So over here, I have my 4K Steelbook and 4K regular disc collections. Also have my games and stuff over here. Uh, some of my favorite Steelbooks, I'm a very avid Steelbook collector. Some of my favorite Steelbooks are La La Land, Mad Max, Parasite, The Last Jedi, Doctor Strange. And honestly, I love all these Steelbooks, but those are just some of my favorites. Um, also in the game category, this is, gosh, this is insane. If you haven't played this game, please play it. Persona 5 Royal. This game is absolutely outstanding. And this steelbook is probably, honestly, this might be my single great favorite steelbook. Like, it's ridiculously gorgeous, and I love the glossy finish of, like, Joker on the back. Again, if you haven't played this game, it's amazing. Um, I also love this other video game steelbook that I have. As I said, this is my favorite game of all time, The Last of Us 2. There's um, Ellie, and then there's Abby. Um, and then on the top of here, I have, I'm a huge Assassin's Creed fan. I have... Might be pronouncing this different. I've said it for years. So, Ezio Atatori de Firenze, Connor Kenway, the American Revolution assassin. And then we have here Edward Kenway, grandfather of Connor Kenway. Um, I am a huge enthusiast of having physical content, not only because you can have actual physical ownership of it, but also the bit rate is ridiculously higher when it comes to visual and audio performance. Um, also right here, I have a couple of Criterion Collection films from my favorite director ever, uh, Wes Anderson. My favorite Wes Anderson film is The Life Aquatic. Um, also have another um, Criterion Collection disc, Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. My teacher recommended that to me, um, my college professor. Um, and yeah, there's, that's my collection. Now with saying that, let's hop to the back. So next thing I'm gonna cover before I hop into my Legos is my little mini fridge corner. Um, right here, I have a red Chinese evergreen plant. Um, puts out some nice oxygen in my room. Uh, my good friend Bree is a really big, I, what, I don't know what the term of plant fans are, but she's a really big fan of plants and she's kind of got me into the little hobby and it's, it's really pretty. I have a lot of plants outside the house, but this is the only plant I have inside of this room. Um, then over here, I have Nuka-Cola Quantums. I am a huge follow-up fan and I had to get this when I saw that they were gonna be available. Um, got three of them when I went to Target and these things are absolutely gorgeous. I'm not gonna drink them. I think they're valued at like $40 per bottle, which is absolutely insane for a normal beverage that's not alcoholic. Um, but also, it's not gonna give me 400 health, so there's no real reason of drinking it, to be honest. Well, then over here in this side of the room, we have my setup of Lego figures. And right here, I have the Battle of Hoth. Obviously, I can't fit on this thing the entirety of it, but it is absolutely gorgeous. As you can see in the right side corner right there is Luke going against the Wampa. Um, Han Solo on a Tauntaun. 
Then there's the Rebel Base um, Shield genera Generators, all the way, well, you can't really see, it's in the back right of it. Uh, snow Troopers, um, it's pretty cool. And then right here, I have my setup of the Millennium Falcon Collector's Edition. And this thing took, as you guys know, they're subscribed to me, four months to set up. This thing is ridiculously huge. Um, if it broke, I, <laughs> I would be a very, very, very sad person. But yeah, there's my setup of Legos that I have in this room anyway. So the next and last thing we're gonna go over in this home theater tour is everything that's happening on the rear end part of the sound stage. Uh, first and foremost, I have this nice reclining couch. I can't spe name, remember the specific name and model of it, but I'll put that in the description below. But it can recline all the way back and I really recommend it. it's really comfortable. Um, behind my head, you can see six acoustic panels. I believe the name of them is Aura Alex or Aura Alex acoustic panels. Um, and the reason I got those and you don't see them on the right or on the backstage is because, as I said, my front channel speakers are really, really, really powerful. And they push out a lot of speakers and the way sound works is once sound comes out, and even when the subwoofers, when sound comes out, it will fly out, bounce off the wall, and then you guys couldn't see it because obviously you're a curtain there, but you put two and two together, there's windows behind there. The sound will go flying right out the windows. And I had stood outside, I was testing out, and yes, you can audibly hear it. And it's crazy because like the other day I was watching Bumblebee and it was so loud, and I had the acoustic panels this, this time, but I had I was so loud, and it was kind of late at night that I was afraid the cops were gonna be calling me. But I guess the acoustic panels are doing a good job or either my neighbors are very lenient on what kind of uh, <laughs> loudness they will allow. But um, I, I tested them in the acoustic panels. It does a really good job. It's not until you turn into the very, very extreme volumes that you can hear it. But these do a really good job. And if you are getting a dedicated home theater set up, especially if you are in an apartment building or anything with like close to other people, proximity of other people and neighbors, I really recommend getting some acoustic panels. Uh, make sure not to cheap out on them because the cheaper models can catch fire really easily and you definitely do not want that. Now, right here on the left and right, I have two more Q50As and I actually didn't explain what Dolby Atmos does when I was talking about the front stage. But basically the way Dolby Atmos works and they also have it in movie theaters is it creates, it's in the word, Dolby Atmos, atmospheric, atmospheric sounds. So if there's ever rain coming down in the movie, bullets whizzing overhead, or in the case of what I was watching the other day, Bumblebee, um, as the jets and alien technology was flying right overhead, it's the most insane thing ever. But they do a really good job, and I'm so glad I went from having two to four because it's like even when there's a helicopter blade whirling above your head, you can singly piece the rotary blade like where it is. Like it's it's really really cool. Um, then right here, and some people are gonna say this is overkill. I honestly know this is overkill. I have the Kef LS 50s as my surround sound speakers, and there's two reasons for that. First, I wanted to go overkill. Second. If I ever downsize and get to an either smaller place or if I need to get like a smaller setup, I can take these LS50s and use them as my front channel speakers. That's what they're made for. And the time when I noticed that I made the right decision is when I was playing The Last of Us 2. As I said, I absolutely love the game. And it's towards the beginning of the game, it's like a snowy region, and a clicker showed up. Ellie pulled, not Ellie, Dina pulled out her gun and I guess I made a noise, like knocked the bottle over. The clicker started to run towards us. Dina shot her gun off. I paused the game, literally turned to the speaker and screamed, what the hell, Dina? It was so loud, audible, and realistic sounding that I literally had to pause the game and scream in it. Like, and then that's when I knew that I got the right speaker. Obviously, I turned the game down and tinkered around a little with the audio settings because I don't want gunfire going in my ear every couple of seconds. I'm not trying to get a tendonitis or go deaf early. I'm still pretty young, so there's that. Then, last but not least, we have the Kef Q150As. Um, again, I didn't want to get anything too expensive for rare channel speakers because they only account for maybe 5% of what's going on in the sound stage at any time. They usually use for just like ambiance sound, but I also didn't want to cheap out on anything because I didn't want them to sound drastically different than the other speakers in my setup. But with saying that, thank you guys again so, so much for watching 
today. Thank you so much to all the YouTubers, Kale Media, um, Reddit, Home Theater, and Audiophile for helping me pick and choose my equipment. And as I said, if you guys like what you see, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And I really appreciate all you guys, and I hope you guys have a really, really, really good day.